So here's problem number eight. It's from the 2012 AP Calculus multiple choice set. Non-calculator question here presents us with this table of values. So at time 4, 7, 12, 15 hours, we know the value of the function R of T, which is measured in liters per hour. So just looking at the units of R of T, we can kind of already realize that R of T is a rate of change. And we have the value of that rate of change at each time that was listed in the top row of that table. Situation that this table applies to, though, is that we've got a tank that's got 50 liters of oil in it at time four. And time four is the beginning of the, the time frame that we have data points for. Uh, oil is being pumped into the tank at a rate of R of T, so that is definitely the rate that oil is entering the tank, not the rate that oil is leaving. Units of R of T we already know. Time we already know is measured in hours. Select values of R of T have given the table above. Yeah, we already realized that. Using a right ream on sum, three subintervals, and data from the table, what is the approximation of the number of liters of oil that are in the tank at time 15 hours? So anytime you are trying to figure out how much change happens across an interval, whenever you have the rate of change for that quantity, you're going to have to integrate that rate of change. So this is the rate that oil is entering the tank we need to know how much oil actually goes into the tank from time four to time 15. The question didn't just say what I just stated. So I just said this integral right here gives how much oil enters the tank from time four to time 15. Question is, what's the approximation for the number of liters of oil that are in the tank? You will be asked to do both of those things, the thing I mentioned and what's actually questioned here. So in order to figure out how much oil is actually in the tank at time 15, we definitely have to account for how much we started with. So if you don't account for this, you will see that just doing the rest of these calculations and putting these values together will get you one of the options. So that's something that's you're just going to have to kind of watch out for and, and make sure you do the right thing at the appropriate at, at the appropriate time based on what your question actually asks. Now we are asked to do, what type of Riemann sum was it? Right Riemann sum. So you might not have time to, to sketch it all out on the actual exam since you've got to work at about a two minute per problem clip. Uh, but here in the video, I definitely did take a minute or two to sketch this out. Uh, so I just basically plotted these data points, right? T on the horizontal axis and then R of T on the vertical axis. And if I'm doing a right Riemann sum, I know my first sub interval goes from time four to time seven. And I'm going to take the height of that rectangle from the value of the function at the right end point. So uh, first rectangle has a width of 3 and a height given by 6.2. So here would be its area. My next rectangle spans the x-axis from 7 to 12. So the width of that rectangle would be 5 units. Right end point is here. The y value at that right end point is 5.9. So this would be the area of that next rectangle. And then my last subinterval goes from 12 to 15. So the width of this last rectangle is 3 once again. And then the height would come from the function value at the right end point of that interval, which is 5.6. So I do these calculations. Uh, so you have to do, this is a non-calculator question, so you do have to take time to, to work it out. Uh, so when you do these multiplications, you get these values, and then you've got to find a way to combine those. So uh, obviously that number is pretty nice and easy to work with. This number is close to 20. I can easily borrow 1.4 from here and tack it onto this and make it a 20 right so i am going to kind of turn that into a 20 and turn this into let's see i took 1.4 from it so i guess 15.4 is what's that what that's going to go down to so let's see that that puts us up to 70 when i add these two guys together and then if i go up 30 from 70 i'm at 100 but if I'm only going up 29.5, I'm at 99.5. So I'm at 99.5 when I tack that onto the two pieces I've already added together. 99.5 plus this decimal takes me to 99.9. .9. And then adding 15 onto 99.9 .9 gives me 114.9. So you will have to do arithmetic like this from time to time throughout the AP exam uh, non-calculator section. Uh, but in this case, we end up with the answer of C. And as I mentioned earlier, if you don't account for this 50, you're getting choice A. So good news is it's multiple choice. Bad news is it's multiple choice.